So, of course, it's a very exciting time in myeloma with a plethora of newer agents uh, being developed. Uh, clearly, the field took a, a, a major turn in the last five to 10 years uh, towards embracing immunotherapy. And um, you know, the, the, really, the, the most exciting current and upcoming therapies that I can think of are almost entirely uh, in the lines of immunotherapy. Uh, of course, uh, it, we don't need to uh, discuss much about the excitement with CAR T-cell therapy. Um, and we, uh, we're in a scenario now, we have uh, two uh, agents approved, uh, in the, at least in the U.S., uh, and that is slowly achieving, uh, slowly reaching more and more patients and, and yielding good results. But I don't think it's going to be the end-all solution for myeloma as access remains a barrier um, and, and the disease still often recurs after CAR T cell therapy. And so I think there are other approaches that are uh, just as exciting, particularly with the uh, bispecific T cell engagers, and they're much more and more fastly scalable. And, and we are seeing, um, you know, very interesting combinations of uh, different T cell engagers being used together or T cell engagers being, um, BCMA directed T cell engagers being used in combination with um, uh, CD38 monoclonal antibodies and trials that are exploring, um, for example, as in Majestic 3, for instance, um, or several single arm combinations in Majestic 2 or Monumental 2. Um, or, uh, or, or magnet, magnetism, you know, to exploring um, earlier use of those agents uh, in uh, combination with other established myeloma therapies. Um, so I think that has a huge potential. I, I don't think we're too far off on time when we might be treating myeloma uh, without, um, you know, any kind of more traditional drug or maybe rely on a 100% immunotherapeutic approach. Uh, and I believe that by seeing the, the how fast uh, and reliably uh, those agents can lead to deep responses, um, you know, early on. Um, apart from those, you know, immunotherapeutic approaches, I think there's uh, it's still a, a kind of a still not totally uh, fulfilled promise of a BCL2 inhibition myeloma. And uh, that's clearly a very powerful way to contain disease uh, on the patients who have translocation 1114 or patients who have high expression of BCL2. Uh, it's not gonna be a mass approach to myeloma, but in that niche population, which should be about 20% of the patient, uh, those uh, therapies can be transfer transformative. Uh, so we need um, to explore that further, and we also probably need better agents uh, that lead to, to BCL2 inhibition. And, and last but not least, uh, we, al we, we always uh, need uh, more uh, mechanisms, explore not, more mechanisms of actions, you know. Um, and there are several uh, combinations being developed with XP1 inhibition. I think that are a promise, and I think... Uh, uh, particularly if we can develop a biomarkers that can help us properly identify what patients are more likely uh, to benefit from such approaches.